Today I want to talk about SSH server administration and why SSH is such a wonderful tool. What I want to show you today is I currently have a Linux box. That's a server and I want to connect up to that server via SSH or secure shell in order to administer some commands to edit my new web server. And the way I will be doing this is by issuing commands on Linux via SSH. So the plan here is to connect up a Windows computer and use an SSH tunnel to complete these steps. I do this quite often and it is an important part of SSH administration. I'll show you how great this tool can be because it doesn't need to be from a Windows computer. It could also be from a Mac or another fellow Linux box. Again, it really doesn't matter. All you need on this side is SSH client tools installed and I have videos for all of this. So I'll put a link in the description below so you can check out videos on how to install this portion if you're missing it. But a lot of people ask what SSH is good for, a learning experience to figure out exactly what to use this on. So make sure to smash that like button for me and let's get started. So sometimes you don't have access to your wonderful Linux box. Perhaps you're at work and you use a Windows computer and you need to get access or let's just face it, we're too lazy to go over to the box itself. Well, SSH can help us. Let's make edits to a brand new index page on a web server that I just got done installing. And the way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to bring up a terminal of my choice. Just hit the start menu and search for terminal or the command prompt. It doesn't matter as long as you have the SSH client tools installed. One thing that you'll need to know is the IP address locally, publicly, or however you need to connect to your SSH server. So I'm going to show you how to figure that out on the Linux side of things real quick. Right here, I'm logged into my server where I have a web server installed. I'm gonna go up top. I'm gonna click on the icons, hit wired connection, wired settings, and then I'm gonna click on these settings so I can see my IP settings. Look at that. 172.168.1.7. I'm going to need to remember this in order to connect up to my server. Another way of doing this, if you want, and this is probably easier, just because it's available in almost every single Linux distribution through a terminal, just type in IP space A, and then look for an ethernet adapter that's connected. Great, notice you have an IP address listed here as well. The 172.168.1.7 for me, and that's the main thing I need from this end. I also need to know my username and password for that user on the server side. I know that and my username is Savvy Nick. So that's the user I'll be connecting to. Let's go back to my remote Windows computer where I'm going to access the Linux server from. In order to do that, I'm going to use the SSH client tools and I can do that by typing SSH space, the username I'm using to connect. So Savvy Nick, as I mentioned before, and then the at symbol followed by the IP address of the server that has SSH or open SSH server installed. That was on 172.168.1.7 for me. Yours, of course, can be a public IP address, a domain name. Let's say it was a Google ser server and it existed on google.com. Well, it would be savvynick at google.com for an example. Anyways, this is enough to get me started. So I'm going to press enter. And now I'm being asked for that username's password located on that IP address where I'm connecting to. So I'm going to type in that user's password right now, and that will actually get me in. Notice it says, welcome to Ubuntu 20.04. And it says just a few things about some updates that are available, but basically this means I have successfully logged into my remote server. Now, another thing I want to show you is what's currently being displayed on my web server. If I try accessing it from a web page. So I'll open up a web browser, I'll type in the IP address, and look at that, I have the Apache 2 default web page here, and it just shows me a bunch of stuff. So the goal here is to replace this page with something else, but before we do, take a second. If you're learning something, subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more videos and learning experiences. Anyways, I'm going to minimize this, we'll check that out in a moment. Now on to navigating my server. So this is much like navigating a Linux terminal or console, where if you type in ls, that shows you a list of all the current items in the current working directory. 
If you need to know where you're located, you can type in PWD. And that shows me that I'm in the home Savvy Nick directory. Well, I know where I need to navigate to in order to change my HTML file around, specifically the index file. And that is if I change directories from root to the var www folder, I can press ls that lists the contents again, and I see there's HTML. Let me clear things out and then I'll type in cd HTML, again, changing directories into the HTML folder or directory. I'm gonna list the contents here and look at that. I see the index.html file. Now, is this the one that we were looking at a moment ago? Well, we'll see by changing it. Use your favorite editor at this point, either Nano, Vim, whatever you want. Anyways, open up the file that you wanna edit and look at that. This does look exactly like what I was looking for. What I'm going to do here is actually change the background color real quick. This is fairly easy. I'm gonna go right here, put in a bunch of Fs and let's see what changes. But I'm also going to scroll down a bit and just put in something else. Savvy Nick's website. I'm gonna change that element around as well. And then I'm going to save by doing control X here in nano and saving the modified buffer, pressing enter, and it says permission denied. Well, that's because I didn't use super privileges to edit this file, which is needed. So I need to put a pseudo up front and go through a very similar process. I'm going to just change the body background color again. So that was six Fs and you might as well put Fs in the comments section because I forgot to pseudo in, but regardless, we're all learning together and back to the Apache 2 default header here. I'm going to put savvy Nick was here. This is now my website. Since I just took it over, I'm going to do control X and yes, I want to save the modified buffer. Yes, I want to rewrite the file and that's all I'll really have to do. What I've done is remotely log in from a Windows computer that I had current access to, to get to my Linux server where I access the web server portion of the server and made a change to the HTML file so you can see how powerful SSH is. Now I'm going back to a web browser, typing in the IP address of the server, and then I'm going to refresh to see that I definitely screwed something up. <laughs> back in here, let me just use Vim and open this up or VI. And I don't think that color was a good choice. Maybe uh, all zeros here instead. Back to the web browser. Now we have a black background. Very good. So where did my text go? I'm not so sure. So I'm going to actually edit it works instead. So again, back to here. I'm gonna edit the index.html file on my server. And now that I see the it works, I'm gonna edit that to savvy Nick was here. And after I have it saved, again, I can refresh and isn't that wonderful that I can be doing remote work directly from my terminal using SSH? It's super simple. And now you can see how we've accomplished everything we wanted to do, which was use an SSH client in Windows to SSH into a Linux box and make an edit to the web server using commands via SSH. Congratulations if you made it this far. You see the power in using SSH administration. Let me know in the comments section what kind of administration that you do for your own servers or computers. Don't forget to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for future videos, smash that like button, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.